Hey there, disaster preppers, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Rad's Guide to Project Zomboid. Episode 20, Power for Petrol. And I'm going to update the priority here. Find spare generators and storage. Um, spare generators are probably the easiest way to find them. There are predetermined locations on the map. Because the loot that are inside storage containers and where the location of vehicles and things like that, that's all procedurally generated. It changes every time you play. But there are the furniture. The installed furniture doesn't change at all. The map is static. Which means that like every time you play Project Zomboid, all of the beds in the hotel are going to be the same. Same layout every time. Same with the food mart. It's always going to have the same shelving in the same spots. It's just what those shelves have as contents will change. Um... So my point is, there are generators that exist in predetermined locations in Project Zomboid. And then there are generators that you can just find in storage containers and garages. So the predetermined spots for generators are obviously a guarantee. Um, I'm just not going to use any of those. For the most part, because like not a lot of them are around Rosewood, but also, you know, I want to do the scavenging for myself, not go to, like, known places. What do I have a degree in? I have a degree in, um, like, uh, IT. That was my, my schooling. That's one metal locker. So given that I'm not going to be living out of a refrigerator, uh, it might make sense to put the other metal shelving here. So moving this trash can um, to over here, and then eventually reworking the sink that's here to where the radio is held so that the sink can be surrounded by eight tiles of water above it. I need to turn off the van's radio. Another good way, if you're like in your base and you're somewhere safe, to limit the amount of weight that you're carrying, um, it's not necessarily unreasonable just to drop your backpack. Because most of the stuff in your backpack you don't need on you if you're going from point A to point B inside your own base. Right? It's like kind of unnecessary to have all that extra like tools and supplies. Um, so that's a good way to shed weight. Now if I put it here, it kind of blocks the coffee maker. Hmm. Maybe I'll put it back here anyway. So. I do now have the tool to the tools to move around and dismantle these metal shelves, so I can set up a kitchenette much nicer. But I'll I'll put the the big storage sort of in the back. Uh, if I get a pipe wrench, I can remove that chrome sink, and then be able to plumb it up elsewhere. So I took the sink out of that, and then I can install it here, and then plumb this one. And the where I have the rain barrels above me, this is plumbed to, to both still. As you can see, there's um, uh, there's plenty of water here. There's a uh, 151 on both sinks because I've used nine. So this other sink that I have here, I like I don't need. Uh, I'll put it in the bathroom. Yeah, there's not even shelving in the bathroom. Um, so sinks are one of those things that, like, you have to install in somewhere. 
Uh, so I'm going to go downstairs and find somewhere to install it, because I won't be able to put it down otherwise. I've destroyed all the counters everywhere, though, so that kind of makes this difficult. I can put it in a washer or dr in dryer, I suppose. It just needs to go somewhere that has storage space. Or a trash can. I could have trashed it. They're not special. I mean, they're, they're crumb sinks everywhere. Uh, so I guess I'm going to update the priority is to set up the kitchen nicely. And of course, nicely is a matter of opinion, but I just mean with a lot of storage and with a maximum amount of water capacity, that kind of stuff. So the shelves are on this side, these counters, uh, they can move. And then I can put the double. Now, unfortunately, there's no L for these steel counters. Maybe there is. I just don't have one. Um, but yeah, this is a, a better setup. The sink's kind of far from the stove if I'm making soups, but it's not enough of a... It's not far enough away that I think it would be a problem. Okay. And that adds uh, 50, 100 to 150 storage that I potentially could use. I will probably want to move the floating radio and mugs that are now weird. Put the radio there. And I'll actually... In this shelf under the radio, what I'll do is I'll keep all of the utensils. So, knives and pots and pans and the like. And then the next one over, I can keep um, cooking ingredients like, like salt and pepper. Which is always nice to have. Now, the shelving in the back here, where the microwave is, and where the... Um, actually, that's probably a better place for cooking ingredients because it's right next to the stove so eventually I want to put the metal shelves under where the microwave and the um, the coffee maker are, and probably move the coffee maker next to the uh, next to the sink anyway oh I don't have my saw on me before I add additional carry weight to myself, let's go ahead and move that uh, second shelf. And all of this is so that it's just easier to cook, easier to move things around and stash loot. A lot of the a lot of the time that you're going to spend in, in Zomboid is going to be just like dealing with loot. Especially if you're like a, a bit of a loot goblin like I am where you take everything because you never know when you're going to want it or need it. Um, so if you are a loot goblin like I am, um, you know, having your loot laid out in shelving that is logical, easy, and quick uh, makes a big difference. Hey, bud. I needed two more planes to barricade the front. So that's perfect. Has the helicopter shown up yet? Uh, yes. So these two doors are getting barricaded.
And now, it'll be a lot harder for zombies to get in. Except for the unbarricaded ones. So, most of the, um... Most of the remaining junk around here uh, can be cleaned up at some point. A lot of it is non... Uh, carpentry like these boxes aren't carpentry boxes so I would have to pick them up and move them because they don't break down into parts same with the trapezoid shop shelves but that's not something I need to do right now it's like a to be done at a later date Hold on. No, no, I'm going to put the bunch away. Uh, I don't know what it broke. <laughs> no idea. I fast forwarded through it and... Did I break the sink? Yeah, I broke the sink. Sink's gone. Okay, well, I don't need to worry about that then. Now the saucepan, the meat cleaver, the frying pan, all that stuff can be put in there. The way Project Zomboy treats um, things like can openers and saucepan, well, frying pans, knives, is when you use it, you'll grab it from the shelf, and then when you're done, you'll automatically put it away. So it's really convenient to have it right where you're going to be cooking. So that you can, if I wanted to like slice up ham or a watermelon, if I'm standing next to where the meat cleaver is, I'll just be able to slice it up if I don't have a knife on me, and then I put the knife back. So, it's very handy. I don't maybe love how the sink is covered up by the, uh, by the storage shelves, though, because it's a little bit harder to see. So I think maybe putting these shelves back horizontally here, and then moving the metal locker, uh, makes more sense the thing is there's a break chance for this metal locker so the more i move it around the worse it is but maybe this metal locker would be good for, it's like a gun locker kind of has that like gun locker look to it so i could put that in here as like a gun locker because i was um low on gun storage space anyway that's why i had the cross uh the shotgun across the bed I underestimated how much gun-related things, things I have collected. It's it's quite a bit. So the locker's almost already full. I will say, if you want to use guns, it does help to have a what would otherwise be a very silly amount of ammunition because the amount of attention you're going to draw by firing off firearms is a lot. So you should have the munitions ready to deal with the consequences of very loud um, gunfire. I want to wait to move or to dismantle these ovens for when I have the metalworking magazine read. And because I want to set up the kitchen, uh, perhaps that's the next thing I'll read. I'll stop the mechanics book and go straight to metalworking. I sort of wish that there was VHS tapes at least for one of every skill. Um, because trying to level up tailoring and metalworking and electrical 
just takes so much longer than auto mechanics cooking carpentry and some of the survivalist skills. There's like a TV show for fishing, trapping, and foraging as well. Uh, just because this the skill grind is not fun. Simply put. And I wish there was like risks that you could take to go find the tapes rather than for you to do an action a thousand times to level up. It's doing an action a thousand times to level up gets a little old, especially when you are new to the game and you constantly die. Um, having to grind out the experience to be able to hotwire cars if you don't start off as like a, a thief, a car thief, it be, gets to be old pretty quick. So now the propane torch and the welder's mask are part of my everyday carry kit. Um, let's listen to the radio while I read. See if we're losing power today. Oh, this radio doesn't even have the emergency channel yet. So adding preset. Emergency for 103. It's also on max volume. Probably unnecessary. Thick fog. That's all I saw. Oh, crazy enough. It's the 1st of August and I'm not losing power just yet, I don't think. There is a mod that adds uh, books and tapes for the rest of the skills. Yeah. I mean, there's mods for everything, right? Like, you could also... The easier way to do it, I would even say... If you don't want mods, you can do it without mods pretty easily, which is that um, in the service settings, you can set it up that you gain a bunch of freebie trait points. So if you wanted to be a carpenter, metal worker, electrician, like you kind of could sort of um, if you gave yourself, if you change the service settings so that you had like, you know, as many trait points as you wanted, you could take a ton of skills that would add not only to your base level, uh, but you would level up a lot faster. Because some of those traits allow you to level up pretty quickly. So for instance, if you are a mechanic in game, you, I think you start off with like level two or level three mechanics, but you also level it up like twice as fast. So the benefits of books compound with that. So you will fly fly past level. Same with carpentry, same with electrical, all those things. And it makes it a little bit more tolerable, I think. And that wouldn't even require mods, just a modified server setting. Which, you know, if you don't want to rely on mods, that's a pretty reasonable way to do it instead. Pineapple, cheese, and pie. Totally reasonable diet that I'm having. So now that I've read all of the metalworking book, I can get the full experience from busting up these um these uh old stoves i also don't need two stoves so this less stove left left stove can go bye bye too keep in mind whenever you do um welding type stuff you will by default uh take off your helmet and whatever else is on your face to adorn the welder's mask and the welder's mask doesn't have as good uh defensive stats as most as helmets do so remember that you probably need to um put your your head pieces back on Oh, my car radio is still on, isn't it? Ugh. I'll get to it in just a sec. There we go. I think that's, uh... That's a nice layout, and then we need one more uh, shelf there, and we're kind of all set. I could also maybe move the plumbed sink here next to the stove. That would be the most convenient, and that's like not a 
reasonable thing to do. Um, so perhaps what we could do is if I get my Carpenter up to level 7, we'll do that. I'm not going to make a point of it because it will require some grinding. Um, but if we do find ourselves with some extra carpentry skills, I'll, I'll make the larger barrels and then move the kitchen sink to right next to the stove. And th that way it's going to be a lot easier to, um, to make soups and stews, things that require water. You don't have to run across the, uh, the room every time. So the metal sheets can also be used to barricade things up and also used to repair. So I can take this metal sheet and uh, barricade doors with it or repair metal car body stuff. I don't have a lot of metalworking skill, so I don't think I'm going to be able to do much in the way. But if I had um, screws on me, I could repair the hood, for instance, a little bit with the metal sheet. So I can either use eight screws or um, a protein, propane torch, metal sheet, and mechanics and metalworking skill. So I can do it without the screws, but it requires my metalworking skill to be a little higher. So it's, um, it's something to work towards to make car repairs cheaper. And the other thing that you could do with it is you can barricade windows with metal sheets, which kind of looks nice, I think, because the, the the boards are kind of like you don't lay them out nicely and they're kind of patchy and the metal sheets uh, they're actually in not that much more HP but it feels like oh man they're never getting through here that's how it feels not how it is but how it feels um I did talk about this earlier about my preference for barricades uh and I'll reiterate my preference is to put uh wooden planks on the outside and metal sheet sheets on the inside the reason is um when you can't see the HP of the barricades. So if you only use metal barricades, your metal barricades could be at 100% HP or 1% HP. And if they're at 1% HP, like one more hit from a zombie and they're gone. And you wouldn't know it. Whereas the wooden planks, because there's four of them, every plank that's missing is another 25%. So putting the wood on the outside means that you can, you can survey your outside barricades and say, oh, this barricade, this wall got attacked, or this window rather got attacked because it's missing a plank and replace the plank. And you've now brought your external barricade from let's say 68% up to, you know, like 95% or something, something like that. Whereas if it was all metal barricades, um, you just, there's no maintenance to be done until the metal barricade's completely gone and your, uh, your, your total barricade is like halved. So if you only have metal on the outside, as soon as that metal barricade's gone, your base is open, right? So I, I really like to do it the wood on the outside, steel on the inside. Um, that's my preference. At the end of the day, barricades don't really... If there's enough zombies outside, they're getting in. Like, there's almost not enough barricading that you can do to keep them out. So... Some of it is a bit of a, like a logical thought experiment where like realistically, if there's enough zombies outside, you're just screwed. You know, you're just, you're just screwed. Um, but if I had to pick, I, that's what I would do. I would, uh, no, I have to remove that. So, uh, we want one more shelf unit for upstairs. And, um, uh, Let's see here. Aviator. Oh, don't throw the hard hat out. Let's favor that as well. So I'm throwing the chrome sink out. Throwing out the kitchen sink. Soul Blader, thank you for your reset. But uh, I would like to get my metal working up, and because I live next to a laundromat, it's actually really easy. So I probably want to leave, like, one washer and dryer um, undestroyed so that I can actually use it for myself. And I think, there we go. So we'll leave, this is a clothing dryer, so we'll leave the furthest to the window intact. And everything else is gonna get broken down. And I am out of propane. 
I think. So that's how fast your propane goes. Actually, where is my propane torch? Oh, uh, yeah, it's just out of propane. But there are some metal sheets that I scrapped, so I'll grab those for barricading up the windows some more. So metal working is almost level one. Electrical's um, getting close-ish. So I can walk over to the propane tank, right-click the propane torch and say refill. And it will pick up the propane tank, use it, and refill it. So there's... I've used a, a small amount of the propane from the tank. And now I have enough propane to continue my work. If you're trying to level up a lot of metalworking all at once, um, laundromats and industrial kitchens are really good places to go. Because laundromats have a lot of washers and dryers, and industrial kitchens do as well. Have a lot of um, ovens and things for you to break down. So those are places that are really good for um, metalwork. For electrical, uh, you're probably going to be looking at going to... Um, like showrooms that have like TVs and the like. Or uh, offices that have a lot of computers. And that's where map knowledge plays a huge role, because the more map knowledge you have of, like, the good places to go to, the far easier it's going to be for you to obtain the levels that you're wanting to obtain. Because you just waste less time um, going through houses, you know, breaking down one TV at a time per house, which can is time-consuming and it sucks. So, already a third of the way to Metalwork 2. And with the metal sheets that I have, now that I have Metalworking um, 1, I can repair the hood of that car. So I mentioned this before, but the hood of your car, your tires, and your engine are the most important parts. Oh, and also the driver's side window. Um... Those are the parts that need to be the healthiest. So here we go. The hood is now up to 87% by um, repairing it with the metal sheets. And I could also do that with the um, the trunk, too. We scroll down here and go to trunk. If I had Metalworking 3, I could repair the trunk as well. So your, your hood protects your engine. If your engine dies, your car dies. And then if your tires pop, your car stops. So those are the those are the really you know crucial things to have maintained well, or you will run into problems. How much propane do I? Uh, I'll top the propane tank when I'm back up. And I broke it. Carpentry six, and I'm still breaking things. That's just how it goes sometimes. Kitchen's looking pretty good. I'll move the um, I'll move the food onto the shelves and uh, and then I can take on some new tasks. It's 
crowbar is very close to dead. Has enough HP for me to, like, use it to go around town. But if I go to a new point of interest that has actual enemies, um, I would want a new one. How long have I survived? Uh, 23 and a half days. There we go. Shelf is storing stuff now. Okay, it's midnight. Dude's tired. Let's go to sleep. Or dudette. Excuse me. I just missed the radio broadcast, probably. So what I'm going to do... Oh, no, here we go. We're keep catching the, the tail end of it. Crazily, it had nothing about whether or not I'm going to lose power. So, the plan now is to get... Um, let me update the priority. Get back up, or get extra generators and possibly a car jack. Those are the things we want most. So the extra generators, one, I definitely want to install at the gas station so that I can have running power at the gas station for when I want to refuel. And then another one on the roof so that I can swap between the two. And if I really want to get crazy, what I could do is I could uh, set up generators around the edges of the roof if I want the uh, street lights on. Because sometimes it's really nice to have a very well-illuminated base with, um, with street lights all around it so that you have uh, superb sight lines of zombies at night. Because nighttime, they can really sneak up on you, especially if you're tired. Is there an end game to this game, or do you mean this run? The end game... There, there is no goal in Project Zomboid. The, the, the whole uh, preface is that it's like, this is how you die, so you play until you die. That's sort of how it's designed. Yeah. The end is you dying. Exactly. Um, and if you survive, that's cool, and you have to come up with your own ideas of what to do. They are... The, the next major patch that they have teased and is supposed to add in a lot of, like, additional things to do for long survivors... Because my biggest critique of Zomboid right now is that if you live a long time, you run out of interesting things to do. You become... It becomes... I wouldn't say boring, but... Routine. Of like, okay, today I have to get the fuel, and tomorrow I have to go tend the farm plants, and... And, um, and that routine might be fine for some players, but other players are like... You know, uh, I want excitement. I want hordes. I want events. I want things to do. I want late game crafting. So they're introducing uh, late game crafting next major patch. But the ETA on that, I have no idea. Yeah, at some point your activity list becomes a chore list. True. Cyclical tasks of chores. So if I want to get spare generators... The best bet is to probably go, and in thick fog, that's going to be a little sketchy, but the best bet is probably to go door to door, um, looking for generators in people's garages, car garages. So I'm taking a little bit extra food, topping up my water, and heading out. That's something of an issue for the game genre as a whole. True. Most most sandbox survival games, um, similar to Zomboid, once you live a long time, you just run out of things. Uh, the other thing that I did not do is put this stuff away. So I'm going to use the dump box, the dump shelf there. Oh, man. I have to reselect everything. I don't need two cans of gas either.
So as you can see, I have a lot of stockpiled gasoline. I'm not too worried about my gas supply when the power goes out. I got, uh, uh, I don't even know how much. I have a lot of barrels of it. Jerry cans. It's too bad you can't like pour it into a barrel. That'd be cool. So where am I headed? Just making sure I have a spare... Yeah, okay, I do have a spare crowbar. Because it's entirely plausible that my crowbar breaks today. So, the car shop... I forgot to do this, but I looted it. Um... I think... We could just go this rows of houses down around here. It's not too far away. I don't need to go on some massive crazy adventure. I might as well clear out. And this is sort of like a general concept. Unless you really know where you're going and you have a lot of time for longer trips. It's obviously more advantageous to do short trips around your own neighborhood than like epic grand trips out to like remote areas. Because the further you travel from home, the more danger you're in, more or less. Because you don't have the security of, like, a home and, you know. And also, the longer you are away from home, the more likely it is for zombies to sort of fill in the areas that you have already cleared. So there's a bit of a disadvantage to even leave for prolonged periods of time anyway. Because you'll end up in a situation where... Um, the once neighborhood that you had cleared out becomes filled back up. Doesn't happen very quickly, but it does happen. Oh, Ray. It's surprising that you're still panicking. Oh, a Rosewood map. I could have used that on day one. My favorite melee weapon is obviously the crowbar. Uh, I use it a lot because the thing is very reliable is the fact that it has more durability than like any other weapon by like a factor of two or something. Maybe three. It's so tough. Um, and nothing is worse than having a weapon break on you in the middle of like a, a frenetic battle. So crowbars are amazing. They don't do the most damage. Um, one of the reasons why I also really like them is their swing speed is pretty good. You, swing speed is actually, in my opinion, less about being offensive and more about being defensive. Because slow swing speed weapons, like, let's say, the wood axe, which is not an unreasonable weapon to use, because, like, the sledgehammer is way slower sl swing speed, but it's so slow that it's, like, honestly an unreasonable weapon to use, because also you swing it, like, eight times and you're just exhausted. Um... For a weapon like the Wood Axe, because of its swing speed, if you do happen to miss your your target, the enemy, the zombies, have enough time to close the distance between you and uh, that they might hurt you. So weapons that swing slowly, I find kind of dangerous to use because it can open up opportunities for you to be have your defenses down where you're not then able to... Uh, push or whatever uh, Another really good weapon which is very easy to source would be spears of course um, because you can If you if you're around trees you functionally have an infinite amount of spears so Spears are another favorite of mine. They're just Spears on survival difficulty Can be OP as well um so the thing about spears is, spears alone, wooden spears, are really nice because their attack range is really high. It's just they don't kill groups all that effectively. But as soon as you attach something to the end of your spear, depending on what you attach, it becomes devastatingly powerful. So if you attach a screwdriver, obviously it's not that much different than a spear. But if you attach a machete to the end of the spear, uh, you are all of a sudden Lubu from Dynasty Warriors, and you can kill hordes of zombies with no effort at all. It's ridiculous. Uh, uh, if you have multi-hit enabled. Because the machete 
does a lot of damage, and the spear has a lot of range. And a lot of damage and a lot of range is ridiculous. So, um, spears with machetes on the end of them would be another favorite of mine. Of course, it's a very... The requirements of that mean that I would... I wouldn't ever use it on Apocalypse difficulty, necessarily. Uh, because the lack of multi-hit. And machetes are rare enough. Um... The other advantage of spears is because they're self-made, and th this will change of next patch when um, next patch they introduce metalworking, so you'll be able to make your own weapons. Um, but because they're self-made, making spears will level you up, and the higher level your carpentry skill is, the better spears that you make. So at really low-level carpentry, you go through a lot of spears constantly. But at really high-level carpentry, spears can be somewhat reliable weapons. Um, so... That's another favorite of mine, although you don't see me use them very often. Just because, compared to crowbars, they're a lot less convenient. Because I can pick up one crowbar and it's good for a week. Ooh, here's a generator. Whereas, like, I might go through, you know, in that same week, like, ten spears. Or something like that. Farming magazine, I already have. Alright, well, I was after extra generators, so here's one. I'm gonna take it. And I still... The last thing... I mean, I don't have a sledgehammer, and that's pretty typical. Sledgehammers are one of those, like... You know, the really rare items that, like, you just don't find very often. Unless you're lucky. Or you're going to high-value points of interest that have very high likelihood of getting sledgehammers. Like, constantly going to giant warehouses or, um... Or hardware stores. Um, yeah. So what I want to do is I want to get to the... Well, I guess I have a gas can in my trunk, so it doesn't really matter. But setting up the generator at the gas station is going to be really nice. And I still want one more for a spare generator for my... Uh, for the roof. The spear one-hit animation could be real clutch against zombies as well. Yeah, and they did fix it. It used to be that spears would do the one-shot animation against zombies, even when you were surrounded, which was horrible, because the animation of a spear kill locks you into the attack, the kill animation. Um, and what would happen is you would, like, do a one-shot animation and all the other zombies around you would just, like, eat you. It was, it was suicide to use spears. And then they fixed it so that that doesn't happen anymore. Um, or at least not frequently. I, it never happens to me. So if it happens to you, you're unlucky or whatever. Uh, where you no longer get locked into the kill animation, which, uh, made spears a lot more usable. Because before, they were just, like, complete suicide. They were no better than using, you know, pens and pencils to try to kill things. Thank you for tuning in to Rad's Guide to Project Zomboid, which originally streamed live on Twitch April 18th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Radamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Radamont.com has a link to it, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, which subscribers and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits, thank you so very much. I hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow zombie survivors.